A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. A dead dog? Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. That is enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Oh my god, look at all these bullet holes! I haven't seen any other bullet holes in the walls before, somehow. Hmm, correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. Grim affairs. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them. A dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet. No sound. No movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. The sun blazes high up in the sky, baking the planks. The sand, your skin. The order was carried out in the afternoon. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round where only one soldier has the loaded rifle 
Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar, each and every one of them. Who were they? Foreign dissidents, unwashed criminals, and hoi polloi. Such is your belief, officer. Maybe you should change it. They were praying, screaming. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Men of duty, dark duty. Who were they? Martyrs of the nation, the ardent knights, the few who had the guts to do this. The commandant, the one who gives the order, machine gun fire crackling through the air, the lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was who in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. Or maybe... What about people from the coalition? The so-called moralists? Yeah, it's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. You don't seem too happy to see the RCM. Oh no, it's all right. I'm just busy. What's this about? Man to man, you shouldn't leave your woman unattended in a cafeteria surrounded by communists. The lieutenant sighs at your flagrant misogyny. The cryptozoologist's companion says nothing, but nods approvingly in your direction. Eh, so that's what this is. Lena sent you. Can't say I blame her. We've been here for days. That damn water lock is broken. We can't go under the 881. The 881 is a raised motorway that separates Martinez from Jamrock. The labyrinth of streets underneath it makes it difficult to pass. Not like walking over a nice water lock. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage. But it's fixed now. We can go back. You broke the water lock with a motor carriage? But there was a billboard in the canal. Not a vehicle. It said Samaran Butter. I guess you're right. It was really the science fault. Anyway, you can go back now. Did he say we can go back now? 
Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. This is a man possessed, always on the brink of some breakthrough. He won't leave if there's a sliver of hope. The great find might happen today. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. What sort of specialized techniques is a plasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes. It makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. A ghost insect, he said. These people are looking for a ghost. Ghost insect? So you're ghost hunters? No, that is precisely what we're not. We are zoological specialists looking for an extant species of phasmid. How big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh... Seems puny, to be honest. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as powerful as some of the other creatures I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoology's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, would be glory itself. What have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one has ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. What would it be like to grasp and hold onto something you think is next to you, or just behind you, like a trace of vapor you exhaled one spring morning as a child? This is what he's searching for. A spectre. Lina said there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe the insulin dying phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought 
Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. Females reproducing without males? A travesty. A crime against passion and common sense. Nature does not concern herself with ethical propositions. As a scientist, my interest is strictly dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed the traps? Yes. More than some, he admires this about her. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores. Of course, but we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. A carnivorous stick insect? Seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. Not a big fan of skepticism, this one. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Let me ask you about something else. Yes. What? It's time to return to you woman, Morel. By woman? You mean my wife, I assume. I will return to her. I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that. Just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. She's seen it? Really? She sighted the phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. His spirit may be willing, but his body might be too old to endure the rigors of the coast. Maybe we could go back to the warning, warm up, come back to check the traps later? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. 
What would we do if the Fairsmith were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. What if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. I'm all in with this cryptic shit. I'm hooked. Caught the bug, I see. It's easier to get caught up in the search than you'd imagine. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality. But still, better safe and stupid than sorry. Be careful where you tread in the reeds. Some less conscientious researchers may have left their traps out there, armed, hidden. What do I do if there's a plasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. Ready to find counter the phasmid in the wild. That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. Did you hear that? Pheromones. You were right about the teenagers. So it really was the phasmid that made the teenager make out. Oh, I doubt there is any connection there. Anyway, these pheromones will attract the insect to you. Or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Should last you about a week. Lay it on me. Tick. This is the smell of dying reeds. Of longing crumbling into the water. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. I'm ready. Let's get to it. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later too. But what if the information is vital? On the hunt. What about his eager to leave friend Gary there? Talk to him too, perhaps. How did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. So you're living your childhood dream out here? It's not child's play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. He takes the dangers and discomforts that come with his work for granted. But just imagine the unforgiving desert heat he's endured. The wetlands filled with venomous reptiles he has crossed. And the most rugged of men? That sounds like my kind of fun. You could get a heat stroke and faint and hurt your head. You could get bitten by a snake. You could get beaten up for trespassing. That's pretty much where I am right now. It could be worse. So much worse. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real? I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. 
I don't. It's a profession, just like any other. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. Your nerve endings tell you there is no such thing as a positive surprise. Life surprises are mostly miserable. Agreed. Yet there is always a chance, albeit a small one, of a truly good surprise. One simply needs to look at the history of science. Serendipities abound. And has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close it. Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. Something for later, this close call. What kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts, like the one that brought us here, to look for the Phasmid. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough? Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration, not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. So you have never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So how many cryptids have you been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Only two have proven to be unreal? Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Then the Insulindian Fazbit will be the third. Indeed. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it, from Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. The hair on your arms stand up. Electricity. Sounds like reeds hissing. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Thanks for explaining that. Now, about something else. Yes? Let's talk about specific cryptids. All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it, since you've offered to help. You need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena, or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. Which cryptid did you almost catch? You said before that you almost caught one. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. What are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact. And can camouflage themselves easily. Wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. 
Wait, so I may have seen these little people without knowing it? You probably have. How did you almost catch a little person? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender color. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. And then? I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. And the inner sighting of the phasmid is that... Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. I know about the most dangerous cryptid, the gnome of Jeroma. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? He doesn't want to make it feel like you knowing it is some big deal. Living? No. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. The... Dread Moose? Yes, the dread moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Hold on, does it also attack people? Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. Okay, what does the dread moose look like? Just like an ordinary hardened moose. Then how can you tell if it's ordinary or the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful. And hard to identify. A moose that looks like any other moose. What's going on here? He's kidding, right? I'm 100% behind this red moose. I utterly believe it exists. Of course you do. The bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. Sightings in Vasa, reaching back four centuries. But, of course, nothing satiates the skepticism of... A detective. Pardon me, I did not wish to seek conflict. It's simply my training to question things. Understood, Lieutenant. I know the biggest cryptid, the giant of Kokonur. That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? Have you seen it? I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco North. No, and I likely never will. The Samuskil Desert region has been embroiled in a small civil war for the last eight years. I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently, while they once used to be constant. Yes, sightings of mirages are constant. A mirage is a constant phenomenon that people have no time to report when a war is going on. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it, as he was inquiring before. He was just being defensive. I know about Cryobacter Catalensis. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. A bit of jealousy there. He'd want that glory, truth be told. Even if he'd have to inject himself with bacteria to get it. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her working gutler. 
No one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nong Ok. The Nong Ok. A flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nong Ok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. Who knows? Well, it's not hunting its prey in its manner. The Ok hangs from tree branches, like a bat. Waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. When did she disappear? Oh, decades ago. In the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. A chasm of academic pretension still stood before us. Even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. Just tell me about a cool cryptid. Any cryptid. No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. This is a gruff man who's been ridiculed too many times to feel comfortable talking about what's dearest to his heart. It's in his shoulders. His face is everything. Enough tales then. Let's change the subject. By all means. <coughs> I'll get going. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about, after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Yeah, I'm more of a city boy too. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art the paragon of virtue. I'm neither of those things, I can assure you. I'm by the books, clean as a whistle officer of the law. Not even tempted to touch intoxicants. I've been tempted on occasion. But someone has to stay strong for Revacol. He pronounces Revacol. With a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. You said Revacol. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. The stupid way? He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message. Inviting you to mispronounce it too. Perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Garbage. You're a true patriot, and you know how it's said. The Seren way. The fine way. With an elegant s. Do you know anything about the man hanged behind the wooden bags? Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. He didn't kill him or anything. But there's something going on here. Is this your mug? My mug? 
W why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right? It seems as you were calling to it longingly when you cried, Yellow Man! Oh, no, that's not... Why would I be calling to a broken mug? All right, I believe you. You look like the kind of man who knows it's a crime to lie to an officer. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? I am, for 250 real. The maximum. Oh god. 250? How am I gonna pay that? Okay. I'll work harder. I'll pay it off. I promise. This is a considerable expense to him. One month's wage, most likely. It's, in a way, admirable how quickly he composes himself after such a blow. This man digs authority, even when it's bullying him. And I'll never do it again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. How'd you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Bohemians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanging behind whirling and racks, into that trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay, I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right, it was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before. But where? What's that strange sound? What sound? That clinking I just heard when you move. Really? There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers. Plastic and glass bottles. The smell of decay. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor. But I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth. But he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. There's something going on here. 
You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. Let's move on, for now. I hope I can help your investigation, in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment, admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. I'm into cryptids. Do you have a favorite? Oh, yes. The burning rhino. Morel doubts he's real, but I don't much care. But I won't be the one looking for him out in Safra Serai. What's a burning rhino? A rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day, but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. Why only the males? The flames are not just for decoration. They are an integral part of the beast's mating behavior. How so? During the burning rhino's mating season, herds of male rhinos, all aflame, encircle herds of female rhinos, forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. Local peasants call it the passion ring. They fear the rhinos, as perhaps they should. Anyway. The lieutenant sighs without looking up from his notes. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some even spiritual. How do they burn? They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it looks as though it has wings of fire. But how is this combustible fluid lit? How does the lightning of this fluid actually work? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its back ablaze. I want to be just like that rhino, running through the night with guns blazing. We don't really do that around here. Perhaps we should have more such decisive action in Revacom. You know, this city used to be a flaming rhino once. A long time ago. You were surprised to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I met no offense, truly. The Lieutenant is a true Vauxhallian. Why did you call him a Seolite? Oh. Yes, of course he is. I was just speaking about his... connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the lieutenant isn't here, if you can remember it. Return without the lieutenant. For this, your balance organ thinks it's a waste of time. Your gut feeling tells you it would be interesting. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. His massive musculature? No, he's scrawny. Try again. Is something worn underneath it? Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor. For example, one that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morel. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got explaining to do. 
Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning, no one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I, I wouldn't have... Fuck. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. CLI officers commanded the Suzerain's Navy. Most of them sided with the King when... They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the Lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. Give me that armor, now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. This is it. This will protect your mortal shell. Don it and live. Why'd you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. Do you know who killed the hanged man? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. This is all he knows. Are we done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. So, Gary, you live nearby? In an apartment in Martinez? Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Have you found your door open lately? In my home? Yes. When I was going to... How did you know? Mr. Everett Clare thought it necessary to unlock your apartment. Mr. Clare unlocked my apartment? Don't worry, I didn't go in. So you work for Everett Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no. Tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. Really? I don't even know what it was about. I just opened the door. Whatever it is, tell him I'm silent as the grave. I was probably talking too loud in the whirling the other night about some theories. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> that patch of reeds over there, it's a great place to hide something. Kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. Wait. I can't see anything interesting. You don't have a reason to. Yet. What is this about? Nothing. Just a hunch. 
The hunch passes, leaving you there, by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go.